Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to be talking about a question I get a lot. What distro should I try on my low-end hardware? And so we are going to look at five different distros that I would recommend one of these two. And of course, since no one distro works perfectly for all hardware configurations, if one of these doesn't work, try out another one. So we are going to go ahead and look at each of these distros. Number five, have a look at Manjaro, the basic one that comes with XFCE. Uh, XFCE is a very lightweight desktop, and one of the things you're going to find is that throughout this list, there's a few desktops which are super light. Pretty much all of these have uh, XFCE or some variation thereof. And uh, XFCE is, to some people, may not be as modern or new or beautiful looking, but I actually think Manjaro does this better than anybody else, outside of maybe Peppermint. But we'll look at that. So, of course, uh, Manjaro is the only one on our list that will only work for 64-bit processors. Although there is a community build, it's not an official community build, but there is a, such a thing called Manjaro 32, where some Manjaro enthusiasts actually built a system that uh, works on 32-bit based on Manjaro Core, but it's not official. However, most of your modern systems are going to have 64-bit processors. If something's really, really old, this one's probably not going to be your choice. Um, but it uh, does support only a 64-bit architecture. And, uh, but it is lightweight. It is the only one on our list that is arch based and it does have a, it is a rolling distro with a lot of packages that are constantly going to be updating. Some people who, if you need the latest updated packages, but you have lower end hardware, Manjaro is probably the best place to go. Of course, some configurations like all of these will not uh, have any, uh, w will not work very well. Um, and uh, take a look at Manjaro, though, because it is rolling. It is based on Arch, so it's a little bit different than the rest of these. The downside is, for our purposes here, is it only supports the 64-bit architecture. Number four, Linux Mint XFCE. So Linux Mint supports three different desktop environments, Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. And I actually did a comparative to all of these not too long ago where we booted up each one of these three desktop environments on Linux Mint. We looked at the memory usages and things like that. Now, what you get with Linux Mint is this is a distro that is uh, based on Ubuntu, but really this is one of the most curated distros there is if you're looking specifically at multimedia. Just this thing works on more hardware than most other distros. It works better with multimedia than most other distros. It has a lot of extra tools that are great for the purposes that it is used for. And you do have a 32 and a 64 bit. Now, of course, for the lowest end software, I would recommend the XFCE build because this takes the least amount of memory running on about 400 megabytes of memory, uh, give or take. And most of these will run on about that much memory. But having a look at Linux Mint XFCE, you're going to get the stability and the curatedness of Linux Mint on a super lightweight, super fast desktop environment, giving you a very nice, very easy to work with system that it's going to work on more configurations than you imagine. Of course, it lends itself to why is it number four on the list rather than three, two, or one. And the reason for that is that the next three we're going to cover are specifically designed for lightweight hardware. Number three, and one, two, and three were hard to place, by the way. Number three, I'm gonna put MX Linux. Uh, MX Linux is based on Debian. It is, of course, an XFCE, but it has a lot of tweaks in it that make, uh, that make the Debian build just work really well. Super fast, super lightweight. It also is the only one which has a desktop environment setup that's slightly different uh, in that from his images you can see here we have what's called Conky which gives us our um, our clock and our dates and things and even the system resources on the desktop but we actually have a our panel is set up on the side on the left you actually have uh, more vertical space on, on the top and the bottom 
uh, and all of the panel information is on the side. Some people like that, some people don't, either way. Uh, MX Linux also contains with it a series of other tools to make easy configuration adjustments on your system. And again, the whole thing is super lightweight, based on Debian, but really works. A lot of people absolutely swear by MX Linux, and I agree, it is a very good distro especially if you need to find something that works on low-end hardware. You also do have the capability of getting a 64 and a 32-bit, so if we are talking about a really old machine, maybe something that came with um, Windows XP, uh, MX Linux is going to work because it will have support that 32-bit architecture. Number two, Linux Lite. Linux Lite is based on the Ubuntu LTS, so the most recent one which just came out is based on Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. It might actually be 18.04.1 um, since that has also come out recently. I'm not completely sure about that. Uh, this one features, again, an Ubuntu build with XFCE. So what's your difference between this and Zubuntu, for example? Well, the difference is Linux Lite, uh, like MX Linux, has a series of built-in tools to make some configuration options quite a bit easier, particularly for the newer user. Not that Zubuntu is hard for a new user, but Linux Lite actually goes the extra couple of steps to get a good system, a lot of stability, based on the Ubuntu core, with some extra tools that make uh, makes things uh, nice and, and easy to see. Of course, you can see here from the website, uh, they have a lot of tools. They have uh, media, they have office tools. Um, uh, the support forums are out there, and it is a very good system. You can use it at home, at work, office, play, you know, all their basic, uh, all their basic things on their, their desktop. So it is, uh, it is a great system that has both 64 and 32-bit support. And uh, it is a system that's going to work very well on any lightweight hardware. Number one is Peppermint OS. This is an easy placement at number one, as Peppermint OS goes a little bit further than even the other distros that we've talked about so far. So Peppermint supports both a 32 and a 64-bit architecture. It is kind of a hybrid between Ubuntu and Linux Mint, containing some of the easy things like the easy package managers uh, and easy software updaters of the Linux Mint, um, the Linux Mint core. It has a combination hybrid between XFCE and I think it's L XFCE and LXDE desktops. Kind of emerges those. It has a built-in dark theme out of the box rather than a light theme. And it has some extra tools, uh, the Peppermint Control Center, a variety of extra tools, a variety of extra features in order to get you a very nice, very snappy platform. So I actually use this on my low-end laptop, which is a Lenovo, uh, I think it's an L21e. So it is 64-bit architecture. Um, I can't remember if it's a single or if it's a quad or if it's a dual core. I can't remember which one that is. It does have two gigabytes of RAM. It's not upgradable and a 32 gigabyte SSD. This thing runs every bit as well as any computer that I have running Peppermint. So of course, Peppermint has also it has with it. Um, uh, another feature called ICE applications, which enables you to build containerized uh, applications that are web-based applications. Now, of course, I think Chrome also has this native feature built in, but with ICE applications, you can build these into Chrome, Chromium, Vivaldi, or Firefox. So if your preference um, browser is not Chrome, you can still use the applications through the ICE applications. So this is one of my absolute favorite distros. Uh, it runs very wonderfully. I'm still, of course, running Peppermint 7, which is still supported, but it's so good, I just don't even want to update it. Um, you know, I keep the security updates up, uh, obviously, but um, all of the, you know, that we are coming up on Peppermint 9, I think is coming up soon, uh, which is going to be based on Ubuntu 1804. I am so happy with this. I do my writing on this computer. I format my books uh, for publication, and it's a very good um, all-purpose, portable, small laptop. So Peppermint OS is my number one pick if you have low-end hardware. So thanks for coming along on this individual video. I hope that you found it useful. Have a look at the links in the description down below.
I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.